recently. A groundbreaking discovery of a mysterious oxygen source, termed dark oxygen, was made 13,000 feet below the ocean surface in the Pacific Ocean. This discovery challenges existing scientific understanding of oxygen production in deep-sea environments. Usually, photosynthetic organisms such as plants, plankton, and algae use sunlight to produce oxygen that cycles into the ocean depths. And previous studies conducted in the deep sea have shown that oxygen is only consumed, not produced, by the organisms that live there. For years, scientists have been puzzled over the sources of oxygen in deep sea environments. But this groundbreaking new discovery confirms that there is a mysterious source capable of generating oxygen deep beneath the ocean where there is no sunlight, potentially transforming our comprehension of marine ecosystems and their oxygen sources. Discovering that there's another source of oxygen on the planet other than photosynthesis also has far-reaching implications that could help unravel the origins of life. So what exactly is this source of dark oxygen, and how profound an impact might it have for all of us? Let's find out. Nestled between Hawaii and the western coast of Mexico lies the Pacific Ocean's clarion Clipperton Zone, a 1,700,000 square mile area of abyssal plain bordered by the Clarion and Clipperton Fracture Zones. Although this stretch of sea is a vibrant ecosystem filled with marine life, the clarion clipperton zone is known best for its immense collection of potato-sized rocks, known as polymetallic nodules, nestled at depths of around 13,000 feet. These rocks, of which there are potentially trillions, are filled with rich deposits of nickel, manganese, lithium, copper, zinc, cobalt. Those particular metals are vital for the batteries needed to power a green energy future, leading some mining companies to refer to these nodules as natural batteries. The initial clues to the enigma of dark oxygen surfaced in 2013, when researchers led by Professor Andrew Sweetman from the Scottish Association of Marine Science noticed an unexpected surge in oxygen levels within sequestered seawater samples from the clarion Clipperton region. When the team first detected oxygen, they assumed that their equipment was faulty because every study ever done in the deep sea has only seen oxygen being consumed rather than produced. Determined to unravel the mystery, the researchers conducted repeated studies in 2021, confirming their earlier observations and revealing oxygen concentrations that surpassed those typically found in surface waters. The research findings point to a significant anomaly in oxygen levels within the deep sea environment, defying the conventional belief that these regions are oxygen poor and primarily dependent on surface water mixing for oxygenation. The higher than expected oxygen concentrations in the sequestered seawater samples suggest the presence of an unknown source of oxygen production, prompting scientists to reevaluate their understanding of deep sea ecosystems. So what exactly is producing dark oxygen? Before we get to that, don't forget to click on that subscribe button and like this video as it's the best way to support this channel. Electric current, even from a AA battery, when placed into salt water, can split the water into oxygen and hydrogen, a process known as seawater electrolysis. So the leading hypothesis proposes that the polymetallic nodules found in the ocean floor act as natural batteries, facilitating a natural electrolysis process that splits water molecules into hydrogen and oxygen. Laboratory experiments have provided compelling evidence supporting this theory, demonstrating that under controlled conditions, these nodules can indeed generate oxygen through electrolysis. Remarkably, the surface of a single nodule generated up to 0.95 volts which isn't quite enough to split seawater into hydrogen and oxygen via seawater electrolysis. But just like batteries which you can place together, much higher voltages were observed in areas where the nodules clustered together, producing more than enough voltage for the task. To test his theory, Professor Sweetman shipped several pounds of polymetallic nodules collected from the ocean floor to a lab. And it turns out that just 1.5 volts the same as an AA battery is enough to split seawater. Therefore, these geo-batteries could explain the ocean's dark oxygen production. 
If you're wondering just how much of an impact these nodules could have, the polymetallic nodules of just one region of the Pacific Ocean, which represents the largest known underdeveloped nickel resource on Earth, contains more than enough battery materials to power 1 billion electric vehicles. This is at the Clarion Clipperton Zone, the very same place where Professor Sweetman first made this discovery. With so much of our oceans uncharted and understudied, could this nodule-rich region be a super rare fluke or just one of many such deposits? This latest discovery of dark oxygen is likely to impact all future deep-sea mining projects in profound ways. The discovery puts humanity and Mother Nature on a collision course. On one hand, we may have just found a massive deposit of battery-grade materials that could power gigawatt hours of battery capacity in the coming decade. And on the other hand, we may have found a way to disrupt oxygenation in the deep oceans. This discovery adds more fuel to the already fiery debate over what to do with these nodules. These nodules could easily be the answer to our energy problems, but the potential impact of deep sea mining on this newly discovered oxygen source raises significant environmental concerns. As mining activities in the Clarion Clipperton zone continue to gain traction, there is a growing apprehension that such operations could disrupt the natural electrolysis process leading to long-term ecological consequences. To put this into perspective, let's take for example bottom trawling, a fishing tactic that drags heavy-weighted nets along the seafloor to catch large quantities of fish and everything else all at once. It's a practice that's not as common today because it catches everything indiscriminately, wreaking havoc on ecosystems, but arguably even worse, destroys deep-sea coral forests which are some of the most biologically diverse ecosystems on Earth. Deep sea mining has always been concerning for many of the same reasons. Several companies conducted exploratory deep sea mining excursions during the 70s and 80s in hopes of finding valuable metals, and there is new interest from new companies to pursue the very same goals. But a few years ago, a team of marine biologists went back to those areas that were mined 40 years ago and found essentially no life. And then, a few hundred meters over to the left and right, where the nodules were intact, there was plenty of life. Understanding now that it's not just the ocean currents and circulation that brings oxygen-rich waters deep into the ocean floor, but that oxygen is actively being produced by these geobattery nodules kind of changes everything. But now things get even more complicated because the very metals we need for batteries might starve our oceans of oxygen. And the timing of this discovery couldn't be worse for companies that have touted deep sea mining as the eco-friendly solution, and one that's less destructive than conventional mining on land. However, 25 countries want the International Seabed Authority Council to implement a moratorium, or at the very least a precautionary pause, so more research can be conducted to see how mining these nodules could affect the ocean. This is especially vital considering that the world's seas are already facing a litany of climate challenges, including acidification, deoxygenation, and pollution. So while the future of the world's oceans is approaching a critical moment of conservation or exploitation, science has proven once again that disrupting these ecosystems could have consequences we can't even imagine. To fully grasp the implications of dark oxygen, Future research will focus on further investigating the geobattery hypothesis and the long-term sustainability of oxygen production by polymetallic nodules. Scientists will also explore alternative explanations for the observed phenomena to ensure a comprehensive understanding of the underlying mechanisms. This research is crucial for developing informed environmental policies and sustainable mining practices that prioritize the preservation of these unique deep sea ecosystems. Moreover, the discovery of dark oxygen has broader implications beyond the realm of marine biology. It may even influence our search for extraterrestrial life, as oxygen is considered a key biosignature in the study of exoplanets. Understanding the natural processes that produce oxygen on Earth can inform our strategies for detecting life beyond our planet. This discovery 
may prompt a re-evaluation of oxygen as a definitive biosignature, considering the possibility of non-biological oxygen production mechanisms. As we stand on the brink of this transformative discovery, it is evident that the mysteries of the deep ocean continue to captivate and inspire scientific inquiry. As ongoing research endeavors to shed light on this enigmatic phenomenon, we may be on the cusp of a paradigm shift in our knowledge of the ocean's hidden depths and the intricate processes that sustain life in these extreme environments. What are your thoughts on the discovery of dark oxygen? Leave a reply in the comments section. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.